There's a task that people find very daunting in Photoshop and that's wrapping textures, patterns, logos and things like that to things like cloth. Because of the folds and the wrinkles, it can be very difficult to get it to look realistic. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to do that very easily inside of Photoshop, but do it in such a way that you can change out the texture and pattern whenever you want without having to do any extra work. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to jump in and add textures, patterns, logos to uh, cloth. So we're going to start with this picture of this woman and we're going to put a texture onto her shirt. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to quickly create a pattern that we can use. We've got this texture here. This is a uh, plaid or tartan, depending where you're from. And what we're going to do is save this as a pattern. So we just choose File, Edit. Actually, we just edit, and then we go to Define Pattern. And then we're just going to click OK. So what it's doing right now is it's saving that as a pattern to our libraries, and we'll access that in a second. And it's just going to be seamless tiling texture. All right, so we're just going to choose the layer she's on. Go down here, grab an adjustment layer, and we're going to grab the pattern adjustment layer. And we can see right there is the different patterns and you could be selecting any of these. In this case, there's the one we just created is selected and it's looking pretty good. If you wanted to make it smaller or larger, you could just change the scale there. But I think that was actually looking pretty good for the size of our document. Great. So what we want to do now is turn this into a smart object and you'll see why in a minute. So where the text is right click and then choose convert to smart object. Now what we want to do is just kind of position it. So I'm going to hit Control T, that's Command T on Mac, to go into free transform mode. And then I'm just going to drag this down so I can see that corner handle, and then just drag this handle down. Now if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop than this, you might have to hold the Shift key to constrain it. All right, so we've got it in position. We want to just kind of angle it. So I'm going to angle it a little bit so it kind of angles with her body, and then just click OK to apply. Great. So what we want to do now is we want to kind of cut it out to match the shape of her shirt. So I'm just going to go down here and I'm just going to grab our quick selection tool. So grab the quick select and then we're just going to make a rough selection around her shirt there. All right. So there's a rough selection. Um, of course, you know, on a production job, I would go and spend a little more time to make sure that selection is perfect, but this will be good enough for the tutorial. So we're going to turn on the top layer, select that layer right now. And then what we're going to do is just click on the layer mask. And what that does is it puts it inside a layer mask. So if we have a look now, we can see that it's fitting the shape. Now, of course, it's just looking flat right now. It's not following any of the contours or anything like that yet. Let's change that right now. So what we're going to do is select our layer first. Then we want to drop our opacity down to about 30%. So just Tap the three key and that'll take you down to 30%. And that way we can actually see, you know, the folds and we can see the texture at the same time. So now we're going to go under filter and we're going to go down to liquify. Now under liquify is a couple of things we want to do. One of them is we want to be able to see her at the same time. So we're going to turn on show backdrop and now we can see the photo. And why don't we turn the opacity up just a little bit? So we've got a nice mix there between our pattern and the background. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in. I'm just going to hold the Alt and scroll with the mouse wheel or just grab the magnifying glass there. And the space bar will enable us to move this around. In fact, I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit. That's, that's pretty nice right there. Okay, another thing. There's two tools we're going to basically be using. We're going to be using the forward warp tool and we're going to be using the freeze mask tool. Now, here's the thing, the forward warp tool, the keyboard shortcut is W and the freeze mask, the shortcut is F. So you probably want to keep your fingers on those two keys and it'll just speed things up. So why don't I hit the F key for the freeze mask and then when I paint with it, what it does is it protects those areas from being liquefied. In fact, let's make it bigger and I'm protecting all of that area. Okay, the red might be harder to see against the red, so we can always go in here and change the mask color to something else such as green. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the F again for the freeze mask. And let's just hit the left bracket key, make it a little bit smaller. And I just want to go to that first fold right there. Now I'm going to hit the W key for the warp, make it nice and big, like really big. There we go. And now we want to move it about as much as that seam would be. So there we go, we've moved that. And now we're going to go back to the freeze mask. See what I'm doing? I'm going down to the next fold, which is right there. And let's grab the W and then just going to move that area that's around where that fold is. Now we're going to go down again. Let's follow this fold all the way down there. Once again, W, just give it a little nudge and a little nudge down there. And let's go to that first fold there. And I think you get the idea. So basically what we do is we just go up to each fold with the freeze mask, hit the W, give it a little nudge, and also here. And you want to nudge it about how much that fold is going to be. And for a little bit of practice, it'll kind of come a little naturally. All right. And then when we've done that, all we're going to do is click OK to apply. And let's turn our opacity back up to 100. So we can just actually just hit the zero key would take it to 100 or slide up there. And look at this. We can see this pattern is starting to follow it. Let's change the blend mode to multiply blend mode. It's definitely going to make it look better. But wait, we haven't got to the good stuff yet. Right now, all I've done is I've applied this plaid pattern. Watch how easy it is for me to change it for another pattern, which I think is actually going to look even better. All we need to do now is just go in and adjust the smart object. Because we're working on a smart object, all our work is going to be saved as a smart filter. So double click, it opens in a new document there. Why don't we close that out? And why don't I just grab another pattern? Let's grab this pattern here. I'm just going to drag it out. And then I'm just going to rotate it around. Let's make it horizontal. And all I'm going to do is just drag this to fit. And I'm just going to hold down the shift and the option there just to kind of drag out those stripes because we're not going to lose anything. And then what I want to do now is just save it. Command S to save it. And let's go back to our picture of the woman and look at that. Now we have that stripe pattern that's going on there. But wait, now I'm going to show you how to put on a logo. So say you want to put on something like a logo or some kind of a design on there. This is how we're going to do it. Just create a new layer. And I'm just going to fill it with white. So I'm just going to hit Command Delete. And that would be Control Backspace on Windows. And then what we're doing is we're going to go down to this little pattern I've got here, three headed dragon. And let's make it a little bigger. And then just hit Enter and save it. Now watch what happens. Let's go back to our picture and look at that. And you can see how that's following all the folds and it looks super realistic. Now we can move this dragon around. I'll show you like if we wanted to do a, a different kind of a design, you know, we could take, we could move it up, make it bigger, you know, give it a completely different look here. Even go off the page a little bit and let's have a look and see how that kind of looks like that. You know, we could take it down, we could make it smaller. You know, there's all kinds of different things we can do with this. And essentially you just do your design here, update it, go back into that image and it's going to update every time. Personally, I think I liked it better in the middle. So I'm just going to save it there. And you can see how quickly and easily we can do that. Now you can switch this out for all kinds of patterns, all kinds of designs, and you don't have to go in and keep warping and liquefying every single time. Once you've saved it as that smart object, you completely reuse it. Okay, so I'm curious, did you guys enjoy this tutorial? What did you learn? Did you learn anything new? Let me know in the comments underneath. Also, I want to give a shout out because in a couple of days, I'm going to be teaching some sessions at Adobe's conference, Adobe Max in LA. If any of you were in my session and you're watching right now, shout out to you guys, say hi in the comments. And if you guys are new to Photoshop Cafe and you like Photoshop tutorials, consider hitting that subscribe button right now and then you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Ring the notification bell so you know when I upload it, which is usually every Tuesday. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. 
tell your friends about Photoshop Cafe, share about this channel. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.